This tutorial is going to discuss the new QsControl.net Venue Manager version 3.0 software, but in particular the GUI interface, the graphical user interface that is now presented to you. If you've never used Venue Manager before, uh, this is a good tour of how the screens look. If you've used Venue Manager before, it's going to look a little different. However, the operation is going to be quite similar to what you might be already be used to. So I'm going to go to the Start menu, All Programs, QsControl.net. I'm going to launch Venue Manager in the normal way. It's going to ask for a password. The default password is QSC. If you've never changed it, you don't have to type it in. But if you have changed the password at some point, you'll have to type in your new password and click OK. Venue Manager will launch as normal. And by default, it's going to come up in what's called the MDI tabbed mode. We can look at the window menu and see that that's the chosen and the preferred setting. I think if you get used to this layout, you'll, you'll come to find that it's really quite intuitive and easy to use. But you're not forced to stick to this. You could, for example, choose to deselect MDI tab, and now you'll have individual windows. In fact, all the windows can be moved separately. Here I've grabbed them all, and I'm individually just dragging them around on my screen. Now, some of the windows even allow me to redock them into different locations. So, for example, I'm just going to resize this window. And you'll see that as I drag a window, it has the, these icons that pop open. And they're only there while I'm dragging the window. If I let go of the window, the icons go away. But as I drag the window, we'll see on the screen that these icons that appear will let me dock the... Uh, the window that I'm dragging to the side. So if I hover down here, I get a shaded area that shows me where this window will be docked if I let go. And sure enough, if I let go of the event log right here, it has docked it in that location. But I'm free to go ahead and tear it right back off again and move it somewhere else on the screen. If I decide I want to move the event log over here to this side, the event log is going to go there. Maybe I want the archive folder down here and for some reason I want the event log up here. I could certainly do that. I could rearrange how everything is on the screen. Let me tear these back off. I might decide that I like the MDI tab mode for those screens that do have tab capabilities, but these other ones, I might want to just redock them back. Now notice too, the middle icon that appears in this general area will move depending on what window this window is dragged on. Because I'm dragged on the larger background window, those four icons in the center are centered on the screen. But if I drag this window on top of this screen, notice that the four icons have moved. So now I can choose to put this archive window in one of four locations on that inventory window if I so desire. And sure enough, I've moved it and now it's part of the inventory window. It's a separate window within there and they're all part of a larger window. Or, to be tear it back off, if I were to take this archive window and drag it back there, instead of dragging it to one of the four quadrants, if I've hovered over the middle, it actually puts it on there in another tab. And now I would have two tabs on that window visible masters global presets inventory that's these tabs along the bottom here whatever I choose to, to decided to show but let me tear them back apart tear them back off take them out of tab mode choose the cascaded view and tear those out. Now, if I get this all messed up and all my windows are totally rearranged, I can make everything go back to factory settings by choosing MDI tab and resetting the docking tool windows and everything will resort back to where revert back, excuse me, to where it was when I originally started the application. This is the default factory look of this application. 
Also, too, I'm not limited to just tearing those objects away. I could instead hide them by using this auto hide function by clicking that little pin icon. Those windows will just gracefully slide out of the way for me. But to make them visible again, I just hover my mouse over the the word, like in this case, archive or global preset or masters, and that window will appear. Let me get it back to my original settings or repin them. I can do that too. And there it's repinned that window back into place and repin this. And like I say, I could just go ahead and reset all the docking windows and everything will go back to where it originally was. So it's quite easy to move things around. The main window, because we're in design mode, not live mode, but in design mode, I had the help topics available to me. Live mode is an alternative way of looking at the screen, but you have to have the equipment. You actually have to have the basis and the amplifiers connected to your computer through a network. We don't in this particular situation, so I'm going to stay in design mode for the rest of this tutorial and for the upcoming tutorials. In a future tutorial, I'll actually show how we switch from design mode, taking a, an actual configuration design and some basis that I'm designing, and actually synchronize them to some live equipment that I would have connected to the computer. I'll also have tutorials on global presets, on masters, and on using Cues Creator to make custom screens and panels for your end users.